So we have to have, ask ourselves then, what is art? <laughs> Are we supposed to answer that? Yes. Yeah, give it a try. <laughs> it's on taking an emotion or a feeling and making it physical. I think it's anything that's visually stimulating to you. So music is, is a part? Not visually or <laughs> See, that's the thing. It's like, wait, wait, we start have to be real careful how we ask the thing, right? So, <laughs> yes, a big blank thing. Yep. <laughs> you want to click to the next thing? Yep. So, this is a dictionary definition of art, which I, Eric has it. There's an I made an entire prezi about trying to figure out what the definition of art is. <laughs> So, I mean, we're not really going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but we're just going to like keep it in the back of our minds while we talk. Yeah? Because I think it's easier to have that there and then go, mm, maybe, about it than to, to like really pick at it now. <coughs> Are we cool? Are we saying one? We're good. Fabulous. Let's click you the button, please. <laughs> My entire like video is going to be Eric's hand going click. <laughs> so um, we have to ask ourselves if a dictionary definition <coughs> is going to tell us what we need to know about art. And I put this in here, um, <laughs> this image. This is a really new piece. This is like a couple months old new piece that uh, Tanya Schultz made. And it's an installation made entirely of candy. Huge <laughs> installations made out of candy. <laughs> They're really, really neat. <laughs> she used to be part of a, a pop art, a pop art duo named Pip and Pop, and they're from Australia. <laughs> so just there for kind of like you know, the wackiness that we can get into with art. Click the button. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> Is art? Can art be decorative? Sure. Think about, can you click it again? There you go. <laughs> this is, um, wow, it's like so not giving me what I want. Do. Okay. <laughs> there we go. This is a piece by Henry Matisse. And part of the reason why I put Matisse in here is because this dude liked his color. <laughs> He liked reds. He was also, part of it was also because he was going blind towards the end of the, his life and he got so he couldn't see the, as many colors as he used to. And he also did things as pieces, like cut them up and move them around because he couldn't move around so well either. So yes, <laughs> artists don't stop making things. But it, it does seem very, very decorative, right? From a 21st century perspective, at the time, he was causing people's heads to explode. Because <laughs> it was diverging from notions of, you know, purely modern art with figures and semi-realism to this, like, very reduced, abstract, geometric. So yes. <laughs> Click the button. And this is a piece by Kip. Omolade? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I'm saying his last name correctly, but these are, um, a, the, this is an oil painting. Okay, am I not the only one who was like, dude? <laughs> I thought it was a photograph. There's a reason for that. Click the button. He built, he paints them for masks he makes. Now, the reason why this is in here is because um, o, o, o Malade, yes. <laughs> um, he's referencing, he started off as a graffiti artist, by the way. Um, he's referencing things like sarcophagi. 
which I probably spelled wrong. <laughs> um, and funerary masks. If you haven't guessed, I'm a miserable speller. Um, cult, uh, culture from Nubia. He is a black dude. Um, and it's not just like the visuals that he's referencing, he's also referencing like the process by which the th these things were made. But these are things that, from a modern perspective, are decorative, but they're purposeful too. They're for funer funerals. They have religious use. <coughs> Sorry, I have a cold. Um, and when we start thinking about that, when we start thinking back to the things that we think of as decorative, they almost always have a purpose, right? Think about your phone. It's beautiful, right? They're always designed really nice, and they have nice colors, and they have a nice hand feel, but they're practical. Your dishes are beautiful, but practical. Your clothes are beautiful, but practical. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not so much the heels, but that's me. <laughs> they serve a different purpose. It is a purpose of feeling confident. So we have to like ask ourselves when we say, yes, art can be decorative, what do we mean by decorative? Right? Okay. <laughs> I can just babble on about this tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Clicky button. Is our artifice. <clears throat> artifice meaning artificial. <laughs> this is audience participation. <laughs> I mean, I know I do go on, but I am one of those people. Say that again? I guess it could be. Okay, explain. I Put me on the I spot. Say yes. Okay. <laughs> See, I, well, look at we got a cross, a square, and a circle. Okay, that's a very, okay, that is the, I have been waiting like four years for somebody to point this out. <laughs> because it's going to make what falls next make even more sense. Click the button. Oh, I thought it was four squares. <laughs> okay, so this is an install. What did she say? Could you uh, speak up? Oh, what? I was just joking. I said I thought it was just four squares in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> So but you're not wrong. <laughs> okay, this is an installation view of one of the of one of the pieces in the series. Um, actually, several pieces in the series from 1915. Can you click the button again? This is where the artifice comes in. Malvik is a supremacist. Like I said, they were mostly Russian because this is a thing that happens in Russia when you're disillusioned and you have the Bolshevik Revolution, the entire bit. When your entire culture goes from being super, super religious to being institutionalized atheistic. What happens with you when your culture goes from having icons, like the, like the Virgin Mary, to not having icons? There is no meaning. To me, anyways. There is a loss of culture. Malavik, because artists do wacky things like this, created the black squares. Did they create them, or were they already there and they just said, here's the black square? Well, black squares have always existed. <laughs> but yeah. it's the, the idea of, well, if they're going to take this from us, let's actually redact it. So instead we have something that functions semiotically. And you know that word. You know that word. <laughs> something that functions semiotically as a religious icon while not being a religious icon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I did so 
of the only one excited about that. I, I have I really love Malibu because I think this is so smart and so just like the epitome of early postmodernism where you're just like so just destroyed by the state of the world. Okay. <laughs> Do you guys remember what semiotics is? Crickets. <laughs> Y'all were quizzed on this, and many of you got it right. That's close. Yes, that's it. The semiotics cat, which is our cat morph, by the way. <laughs> the semiotics cat. The word cat does not look like a cat, but we know that it's a cat. I actually thought about showing you a picture of my cat when I said that, but then I'd have an entire conversation about simulations, and that seemed like too much complication. <laughs> so yes, the semi semiotics cat, the sign and the signified. The sign, the black square, the signified, the icon. It's exciting, right? Sure, it is. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for, you know, humoring me there. <laughs> Look at you think, please. Is art revolutionary? Can it be revolutionary? Yes. And why? Because they can take possession by Times. political views. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Discrimination. Things that's going on in that country. So, okay, Lloyd Lloyd said that, you know, it art can art so your art can state positions in ways that other things can't. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, well, well like the cartoon drawings. I don't want to compare art to cartoon drawings. It is an expression where, you know, you have the the artist is the big head and whatnot. We're getting to that. Yes. <laughs> so oh, Funny you should mention that, yes. Funny you should mention that. It's about two slides down. <laughs> Big Ben or Obama? <laughs> Obama. <laughs> I just like stuck him in there. He's going to pop out of the screen. It's all 3D. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, what were you saying? Oh, um, I was just saying like they can show a perspective, opinion, stance, stand on an issue. Yeah. So she, if you couldn't hear her, she said if art can project a stance or a perspective on an issue. Which is why we have Guernica, which is a monumentally large painting. This thing is like longer and taller than the wall. It's huge. It was in the um, 1936 World Fair? 37 World Fair? 36. 36 World Fair. <laughs> it was, um, this is Picasso. Remember I said we were gonna talk about Picasso a little? But Picasso, on top of being a cubist, was also a collagist. Collagist. And had an interest in found objects. Hence the collage. <laughs> yeah. He was also from Spain. Take it away, no? I'm sorry. <laughs> I get really upset about the Spanish Civil War. Yeah. Yes, well, do any of you, do any of you in here, did you learn about the Spanish Civil War? Yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about it then, please. Well, it was a war between the Spanish and the Portuguese. If it makes you feel better, the Spanish Civil War is usually one sentence in a textbook. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally, there was a, a civil war in Spain. <laughs> what they don't tell you is that a fascist regime, regime ousted a democratically elected socialist government. <laughs> that, that the people who funded it were Hitler and Mussolini and people from America, because <laughs> we suck. <laughs> And they don't tell you about things like Guernica. 
which was the, historically the first targeted attack on a civilian pop population. Yeah, it, basically the the, um, the the Spanish the Spanish Air Force, with the help of the Nazis, bombed a Franco's Spanish Air Force. Yeah, they they bombed a a, a town. A, a, a civilian population because, you know... With no military use in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Which the Americans later did at Dresden. Yeah. <laughs> well, we learned a lot of things from the people in World War II. <clears throat> but Guernica is uh, Picasso's response to it. It's his trauma writing of it. And it's also the culmination of all of his various and sundry methods of art making. So yes. Revolution, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Something else they also don't tell you is that Americans went to fight um, against Franco in the Spanish Civil War and they were later deemed premature anti-fascists. Because you can be premature about your anti-fascism. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I wish I was. <laughs> I had an entire class on this. It was not a good semester. <laughs> Click the button, please. <laughs> See, I told you, Obama. 